You roll a car tire, eventually it will stop. But imagine the tire is made out of steel. That tire would roll for quite a distance. In short, the rubber tire has a higher rolling resistance compared to the steel tire. What is rolling resistance? What causes this? Let's explore. To understand the physics behind rolling resistance, you should first learn about the material properties of rubber. Consider this rubber band or this cylinder made up of rubber. You can easily stretch it or compress it by gradually applying force. When you release your hand, it goes back to its original shape. However, if you look closely, you'll notice that the cylinder behaves differently while it is compressed and decompressed. Let's conduct the force experiment again. The force varies from 0 to 50 Newton and back to 0 Newton. Let's play this experiment in slow motion and pause when the force reaches 25 Newton. Let's capture the shape of the cylinder at this instance. The force reaches 50 Newton and then the return motion. During the return motion, when the force is 25 Newton again, let's pause the scene. You can see that during the releasing process, the same 25 Newton force produces a lesser length. During decompression, the rubber achieves the original length quite slowly. This behavior is more clear in the graph that depicts the force versus length for the compression and decompression processes. Rubber behaves differently during compression versus decompression, even if the final shape is the same. This property is known as hysteresis. Rubber is not a perfectly elastic material. The long, tangled polymers of the rubber have a viscous effect as well. The viscous effect leads to energy loss. In short, when the rubber material undergoes a hysteresis cycle, it loses energy. To understand the effect of hysteresis on the tire, keep in mind that when compressed rubber is released, it achieves the original length quite slowly. When a perfect tire rolls, it has zero rolling resistance. By perfect, I mean that the contact region between the tire and road is on a line. A rolling tire will have zero velocity at this contact line. This is possible because the wheel has two types of motion, translational and rotational. When we add up these two velocities at the contact line, the resultant becomes zero. Zero velocity means the contact line has no relative motion with the road and frictional force should also be zero. Because of this, a perfect rolling tire can roll forever. However, in the real world, tires make contact with the ground not on a line, but on an area. We call this a patch area. Especially the tires of cars, due to the huge weight acting on them, the tire's bottom region will get compressed. Please note that the tire compression shown here is exaggerated. Now let's see the effect of hysteresis on a rolling tire when the bottom is compressed. You can see that an actual rolling tire has two regions, undeformed and deformed. As the tire rolls, the rubber tread from the undeformed region enters the deformed region. The radius of deformed region is much smaller than the tire radius. This means as the tread element enters the deformed region, they have to undergo compression. From here, they have to go to an undeformed region or the tread element undergoes expansion. This means that a rolling tire's tread elements continuously undergo compression and expansion. As we saw earlier, when the rubber material undergoes compression and expansion, it has to undergo hysteresis cycles, which result in energy loss. The same energy loss happens in a rolling tire. This is the reason a rolling tire slows down. The hysteresis energy loss produces a new resistance called a rolling resistance. The hysteresis nature of rubber results in a few other interesting phenomena as well. We know that during the decompression phase, the material reaches its original length slowly. Due to this, the tire region on the right side does not press against the road with the same vigor as that of the left side. The result is that the right region has a much smaller normal force compared to the left region. This is why low distribution of a rolling tire is always non-uniform as shown. Stay tuned for the next video in our Vehicle Dynamics series. And don't forget to be a Learn Engineering member. 
Thank you.